Morning. It's Thursday right here in the beautiful Buckhead community of Atlanta. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. If you are coming on, please hit that like button, hit that share button, tag Lolly Dolly everybody and let them know your boy, Prophet Ramon, the squad, the whole squad. We are live right here in the beautiful Buckhead community of Atlanta, and today is Thursday. Happy, happy Thursday. I don't call it Throwback Thursday. I call it Throw Down Thursday because I want to throw down. I want to make some things happen today. So thank you for joining the Ramon Preston Show today. If you're coming on, hit the like button, hit the share button, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube page. Please subscribe to my YouTube page. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, you don't stop, and LinkedIn. You can find me everywhere at Ramon Preston. But more importantly, if you're watching the show right now on YouTube, be sure, pretty pleased to subscribe to my YouTube page. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. We have about 7,300 subscribers. So that means we're probably around 2,600 and some change subscribers away from 10,000 subscribers. I can't wait to get to 10,000. I can't wait to get to a million, but right now I just need to get to 10,000. So welcome to the Ramon Preston Show. I'm your host, Ramon Preston, every Monday through Friday, 12 o'clock noon, Eastern Standard Time. I show up here on this show to share information with you that I know can be used by you to help you fix whatever's broken in your personal, professional, or financial life. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're having trouble starting your business, structuring your business, you don't know how to get your products priced and packaged correctly, maybe you don't know how to start your holding company or you started your LLC wrong, maybe you're just having financial trouble and you're trying to figure out new ways to create new income, or if you have a business and it's up and running but you don't have the right systems and processes, you don't know really how to put a system together and a process together for your sales, your marketing, your financials, and your operations, Everything that I share with you on this show is a snippet. It's an extension. It's a representation of what we do here every day at Ramon Preston Enterprises through our consulting division, our coaching division, and our training division. So I am categorically a business and financial consultant and coach and trainer. So I provide consulting, coaching, and training to individuals, to business owners, to ministers, to pastors, to uh, uh, individual entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, independent contractors, network marketers, anything in between, I can help you. So I'm glad that you joined the show today. Today I wanna talk to you about the blue ocean versus the red ocean strategy. I don't know, you might have missed yesterday's show, but yesterday's show I was talking about the five uh, steps to uncommon results, things that you can do in this season of uncertain times, right? This season of uncertain times, this recession that we are uh, in right now. And um, one, of the, one of the steps that I gave you yesterday during the show was uh, to occupy over occupied space. Okay, and, and, and once, I, once I started talking about it yesterday, I realized that there are a lot of people who just don't understand that concept. And it's not a new concept. So I decided to circle back around today and to talk a little bit about it. So it's really, it's really a part of this blue ocean versus red ocean strategy. So I don't know, maybe you've never read the book. I'm not really necessarily promoting the book, but there's a book that was written about blue ocean versus red ocean strategies. And there's a lot of information you can find on the internet. I mean, if you just Google blue ocean versus red ocean, you're gonna get all kind of information that come up. Just Google it, just give it a shot. Google blue ocean versus red ocean, okay? Or blue ocean strategy versus red ocean strategy. So I'm gonna give you my remix version because I'm not gonna try to explain to you the whole book. You gotta read the book and you gotta do a lot of research yourself, but I'm gonna show you what my perspective is on this blue ver ocean versus red ocean strategy. So so, so let, let, let's get into it. So the blue ocean, the blue ocean is really a representation 
the blue ocean is a representation of a business. And again, I'm just giving you my remixed version because I think it's very important for what we're experiencing right now in the economy. So if you, if you have a blue ocean business or if you are a blue ocean entrepreneur and you are looking to implement blue ocean strategies, what it means is you have a mindset and a business and you have strategies that are, are, are dominant. You're, you're looking to dominate, right? You're looking to dominate. You want to dominate your sector. You're not looking at anything else but domination. Now, if you have a, a red ocean business, you might not be looking at dominating. You might be looking at just competing. Okay. So depending on the type of business you have, depending on the type of entrepreneur or leader you are, depending on the type of strategies you implement or information you know, it kind of determines which ocean you are part of, okay? So if you are like this blue ocean business, this blue ocean person, you have this mindset that is very unique, all right? That's another word, unique. It could be very unique over here, okay? Over here, this could just be average. This could, this could be a one of a kind. This could be like a, a Uber, right? Or, or a Facebook. This could be a blue ocean business. Over here, it's not one of a kind. It's a very familiar uh, business like uh, digital marketing. Digital marketing is not necessarily a blue ocean business. Um, certain technology and certain uh, apps are no longer uh, blue ocean or, or, or businesses or apps or technology because they're, they're red ocean. But here's what I want you to understand. This is why I wanted to circle back around and talk about this because I truly believe, yes, the, the goal for you as an entrepreneur, the goal for you as a business owner is to have a blue ocean world, is for you to build a business and be the type of entrepreneur that, that, that has a blue ocean business. But here's the problem with this. Most businesses are not blue ocean businesses. Most businesses are not necessarily dominating their industry. They ain't dominating their sector. Like if you a barber, I mean, like, how are you dominating the, 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 the world of being a barber? If you a landscaper, how are you dominating the world of being a landscaper? Very few people take the typical industries and businesses and markets today and turn them into blue ocean businesses or industries or markets. Very few people do that. And this is where I think a lot of people get it, get it wrong because what happens is you, like me, are an entrepreneur, you're eager to learn, you're eager to grow, you're eager to innovate, you want to do something new, you want to do something unique, you want to be one of a kind, you want to dominate your sector, but the problem is you are not that unique. You are not one of a kind. You, you don't have the capacity or the bandwidth or the ability to dominate because you like the other 99% of the businesses and, and entrepreneurs are using the same resources. You're using the same energy. You're listening to the same content. You are around the same kind of people. You're doing the same activities. And so even though you think you are or you want to be a blue ocean type business, the truth is you over here in the red ocean because a blue ocean is like an ocean that's free, right? It's an ocean that's open. There may be uh, one boat in the ocean and it's millions of fish. Over here in the red ocean, you swimming with the sharks. You swimming with the sharks. Cause over here in the red ocean, why is it red? It's red because it's a lot of blood in the water. So everybody is a life coach today. Everybody is a financial expert today. Everybody is a credit repair specialist today. Everybody is a, is a designer today. Everybody got a clothing line, you see? Everybody's got their own brand. Everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody is an influencer today because everybody's in this red ocean. So if you have the mentality of a blue ocean, 
even if you are in the red ocean, you can actually still create success. That's the part that some of you got to understand because I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs who are in red oceans and in their mind, they're in a blue ocean, but it's only in their mind. Their products and services are not blue ocean products and services. Their skill sets are not blue ocean skill sets. Their, their mentalities are not blue ocean mentalities. Their, their, the circle of people that they are around ain't no blue ocean circles. So the truth is they are over here in red oceans with a, with a idea of being a blue, a blue ocean, but they don't have what it takes to be that. And so I'm not really concerned about trying to create this dominating, unique, one of a kind business, business that's going to literally disrupt a whole industry. Would I like to? Of course, but I'm not going to spin my wheels and waste my whole life trying to be something that obviously I can't become. If I'm a business and financial consultant, there are a lot of them. Like I can Google business and financial consultants in Buckhead and I have a whole list of people on Google that have come up, right? So that means I'm not the only business and financial consultant. If I Google business and financial coaches in Buckhead, it's going to be a whole lot of people that come up. If I Google business and financial training and education, there are a whole lot of companies going to come up. So the truth is I can be over here in my own world thinking, yeah, it's only one of me. Yeah, you're right about that from a biological perspective. But when it comes to the economics of your marketplace, bruh, sis, you ain't the only one. Like, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you got your phone or a tablet or computer, went to a Google search bar and typed in the type of business you have in your city? So think about the city you live in right now. Okay. Think about the city you live in and think about the business you got or the job that you got. So whether you're, you have a job or whether you have a business or if you're a real estate agent or if you're a network marketer or you're an insurance agent or you're a barber or you do hair or nails, whatever it is that you do, I want you to type in a Google search bar your city and people who do what you do in your city and see how many people come up in your city that just your city, not your county, not your state, not the, not the United States, not the world, just your city. I guarantee you this, that you're going you're gonna to see is tens of thousands of people unless you're just like in a rural, rural area, like a small area in the boondocks. It ain't going to be thousands of people. But if you're in a place like Atlanta or Buckhead or you're in the outskirts of a city, if you just put in the Google search uh, business and financial coaches in Atlanta or barbers in Macon, or if you're in South Florida or Michigan, put in landscapers in this zip code and see how many people come up. So what that shows you is your business in the state that it's in, or you based on where you are, you are not necessarily in a blue ocean. You are not in a blue ocean. You have to accept that. You know, even before you go to a hospital, you have to be willing to it, get admitted, right? So you have to admit and accept that. Okay. I, I'm not a, I'm not a blue ocean. I'm not that. So I got to get some work done in order to, to, to get that mindset. But right now my business may be a red ocean and that's cool because I'm competing with a lot of people. I've got average products and services my business or my type of business is a very familiar business and I'm cool with that right now because at least I can put a pin in where I am right now. I want to know where I am right now because it's going to take us back to one of the steps I gave you yesterday, but it really helps you to understand the blue ocean versus red ocean. Now, again, the concept of this blue ocean versus red ocean, uh, strategy and I'm not speaking for the author. I'm not speaking for the experts who came up with this stuff. I'm just talking my opinion and my perspective. So from my perspective, based on my opinion, the concept 
of this blue ocean versus red ocean strategy is for you to migrate to a blue ocean in terms of building a business and creating a company and systems and processes and products and all of these things that literally separate you from the rest. That concept is true. That's what you want to do. The problem is if you try to leave the red ocean and do it, you might find yourself drowning out there because all the fish then went somewhere else. So how do you actually go into a red ocean, which is where most of us are, how do you exist in a red ocean where you got a lot of competition? Your business, like every other business, is the average business, and you can feel what you want to feel. You can say, well, I ain't no average business. Okay, you feel how you want to feel. But if this is just the idea, if your productivity, if your success rate, if your results, if your revenue, if your impact is not showing anything different, you're average. It's just the way it is. Like I would consider my business an average business because my business ain't making a hundred million dollars a year. My, I don't have 500 employees. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not in front of no magazine. And some of you may think, well, th that don't gauge your success. Well, to you it don't, but I'm looking at my scoreboard. So until my business is big enough that it's making that type of impact and I'm generating that kind of revenue and creating jobs and opportunities for people and changing the, 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 the course of history for myself and my family and the people that's connected to me, I'm gonna consider myself average. Cause I'm not going to lie to myself and act like I'm a blue ocean business. When the truth is I'm a red ocean. I'm over here swimming with the sharks. I'm over here trying to not get bit. And most businesses are over here right now swimming with sharks, just trying not to drown. You just don't want to get bit, but you got to figure out ways that you can exist over here, but have this kind of, activity, this kind of mentality, this kind of operation. It don't mean you shouldn't strive for that outside of a red ocean, but everybody's not going to be Mark Zuckerberg. Everybody's not going to be Elon Musk. Everybody's not going to come up with this idea called Uber or DoorDash. Everybody's not going to do it. Just because you see one or two people pop out and they are like unicorns and they become the next best thing in that industry, it don't mean it's going to work for you. So when you think about basketball players, everybody ain't going to be LeBron. Everybody ain't going to be Steph Curry, right? When you think about tennis, everybody ain't going to be Venus and Serena Williams. When you think about football, everybody ain't going to be Tom Brady. Everybody ain't going to be Deion Sanders. When you think about different areas of life, everybody's not going to be the top five or 10 or maybe top 50 or 100 people you know. So for every Michael Jordan, for every LeBron James, for every uh, uh, Tom Brady, for every uh, Drake or Lil Wayne, how many other millions of people are there that's out here swimming in red oceans, but they are not aware of where they are and the things that they need to learn in order to make the biggest splash over here. Am I making sense to y'all? If, if what I'm saying is making sense, please drop something in the comments to let me know. Please drop something in the comments to let me know because this is a concept that I myself live by every day. This is a concept that a lot of people that I'm around live by. And I'm not just talking about people. I'm not just talking about people who are really, really, really success, uh, really, really average in terms of like making a million dollars a year or a couple hundred thousand. I'm talking about people who I, I'm regularly around who are multimillionaires, even billionaires who understand these two concepts, but they also understand that if they're going to be in the red ocean, there's some things that they're going to have to do. All right. So let's just assume you are a red ocean business. You have a lot of competition. Most, most entrepreneurs don't even know what their competition is. So again, you should be Googling the type of business or the type of job you got in your city to see how many people do what you do. Cause that's letting you know where your competition is. Or you waking up every day thinking, I'm the only one that's as good as I am. Well, it don't show in your revenue, right? Like as good as I think I am when it comes to being a business consultant, a coach and a trainer, well, 
I might think that, but I'm looking at my revenue. I'm looking at my impact. How many people am I serving? How many opportunities are before me? How many appointments do I have? How many people am I getting in front of who are turning into clients that really want what I have? That's helping me to determine if my competing is turning into domination. If I think I'm unique, but I'm average, well, I need to look at what my business is doing. Because if my business is doing average things, then I'm not unique. I may want to strive to be unique. I may want to strive to dominate. I may want to strive to be one of a kind. But if I'm still familiar because I'm doing what everybody else is doing, I've got to figure out new creative ways to take the mindset of a blue ocean business the skill set of a blue ocean business and be able to exist in a red ocean. This is why even yesterday I was telling you to occupy, occupy, occupy over occupied space. Do you understand what I mean by that? Do you understand what I mean by that? Occupy. So occupy is the root word for occupation. Do you get that? Occupy is the root word for occupation. So whatever your job description is, whatever your industry is that you're in, whatever type of business you have, you've got to see that as a occupation. And if you have an occupation, that means you have a responsibility, a duty. You have a demand to occupy space. I don't care what kind of space it is. You can't pick and choose what kind of space. You can't afford to do what some of these big multi-billion dollar companies can do. They can just throw spaghetti on the wall and just by throwing spaghetti on the wall, enough is gonna stick for them to swing their revenue a couple billion dollars. You can't afford to do that. You can't afford to waste money on stuff that's not helping you get closer to where the sharks are feeding at. So if the sharks are feeding and the water is red because it's full of blood, well, at least that tells me there are fish over there. So I just got to figure out how can I get to the fish, <laughs> if you follow me, without getting bit by the sharks. I got to learn to swim with the sharks. So do I have to put a shark suit on? Do I have to get some type of cage that I can protect myself? Do I need to get a spear and get some flappers and get some type of ventilation going so I can get over there and not panic and pass out? I have to figure out the best creative ways to go into these red oceans and occupy, take my occupation, my occupation, my ideas, my talents, my talents, okay, my, my abilities, and turn these things into products and services that can help me catch, that can help me catch, that can help me convert, that can help me convert. I got to figure out how to do it, okay? So taking the blue ocean strategy. Now, I want to talk to you about some blue ocean strategies that you might need in order to be able to go into red oceans that are bloody, that are full of sharks and occupy those over over occupied spaces so you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta learn how to go into these bloody waters and occupy over occupied space like i remember there used to be a show i think it was on discovery channel or national geographic it was one of those shows i forgot which which network it was on but there was a show uh where guys went out and they caught tuna you might have seen that show before, uh, Big Catch, The Biggest Catch, something like that. They go out and catch tuna. Uh, they got a show where they catch king crabs or some type of crabs and uh, snow crabs or something. But it ain't just one boat. It's, it's multiple boats because the season open. So the space, 
the space that they're in, the ocean that they're in is actually a red ocean because they really didn't have the luxury of going somewhere on some side of the earth where they could just be the only ones fishing for tuna or for a uh, uh, mahi mahi or you know what I mean for for crabs and and stuff like that. So so all of them occupied it. But every once in a while you'll have this one captain that will have certain data points. Did you, did you ever watch that show? There there would always be one captain that will have some data points. They will have some data points. And, and, and those data points, those data points will show them, okay, here's like the little fishy here. <laughs> these, these are data points they would have. And they will show where the fish were. And here's, they, here, here's their little boat over here. I'm just making a little fake boat. That's their boat over here. So they got little data points to show them on these grids. These are all little grids that they're showing them these data points. A lot of captains had this, but they may have not had a record. Certain captains will start pulling out books and saying, well, for the last 12 years at 3 p.m. when the sun turns this way, we have a tendency of seeing more fish float at this foot than we do uh, at this foot. And all of a sudden, they start catching fish that other captains couldn't catch. And the other captains over there looking like, man, what are they doing? Well, they had blue ocean strategies, even though they were in a red, saturated, overoccupied ocean, if I'm making sense to you. All right. So your business, your business, even though your business may be a red ocean business, meaning that, OK, your business is not Facebook. Your business is not Twitter. Your business is not Uber. Your business is not DoorDash. Your business is not the next best thing since sliced bread. It is a business. It is what you're using to 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 participate in a certain occupation. Now you have to figure out the best, most creative way to occupy space, even if the space you are occupying is over occupied. One of the, f and, and, and I want you to hear me on this because I know when you hear this, you think I'm just selling a program or a product and service in which I am. My goal is for you to become a business uh, client. My goal is for you to join my program. However, I'm also giving you information that I know is accurate and true. So, so one of the, one of the best blue ocean strategies you can use is while you're in the red ocean that's saturated to position yourself properly in that ocean. This is why I always talk about the holding company. And I don't care how people feel about it. Some people disagree with it. And I hear people say all the time, well, you always talking about a holding company and, 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 and CPAs don't understand what you're talking about. And, you know, I talk to a tax person or to this person and they say that's not the right way to go. No, that's just their opinion because all the attorneys and the CPAs and the tax strategists that I talk with, they have no, they, they don't even have, have any concern with my LLC being structured as a holding company. I don't even think my tax, my tax strategists even ask me that question. Who cares? All they're thinking about is, are your projections correct? Are you forecasting correctly? Do you got your books together? Are you tracking your income and expenses? Are you mitigating and minimizing your taxes? These are the things we talk about. We're not talking about infrastructure. So people who have that opinion and perspective, hey, let them stay where they at. But there's always somebody who understands what you are anticipating or in the process of doing. So back to my point, if you know you're in a blue o uh, red ocean and you know your market is saturated because whatever it is that you're doing as a professional, whatever it is that you're doing as a business, you know, they everywhere. They come a dime a dozen. Most businesses are like that because they are not blue ocean type businesses but you can have a blue ocean strategy. I think this is one of the most important strategies because now if you structure a holding company 
especially if you use the process that I teach on making sure that your holding company covers all three B's. Okay, the three B's. This is what I teach. You got your, your business structure. This, this is actually a, a blue ocean strategy. Your brand identity. and the brand ambassador. So this is the three B's that I teach on when it comes to, this is just one of the concepts that I teach when I'm talking about the holding company. You wanna make sure that your holding company, which is going to be an LLC, that it is, it is structured or set up in a way that it can reflect all three B's. So your business structure, if it's a holding company, that means if you have certain things that you're doing, multiple things that you're doing, those multiple things may either be divisions or they may have to be separated as separate entities and be subsidiaries. But even if they are Div separate divisions or separate su subsidiaries, they should all still flow perfectly under the umbrella of your holding company, all right? So your business structure, how you structure this, because you don't want something you're doing as a subsidiary. It's an operational entity that you're doing. It may be a product you're selling or a service you're providing, and you have that at the top because it's not, gonna, it's not gonna give you the flow of the structure you need. And it ain't gonna help you position yourself properly in the market. See, I want all of my clients and students to be at the top of the mountain of this holding company. And I want them to use this holding company to have the correct business structure and to have the right brand identity. This is one of the reasons why I use my name for my holding company, which is Ramon Preston Enterprises LLC, because I want to take into consideration my business structure and my brand identity. And because it's named after me, it's representing the brand ambassador. So I can actually check all three boxes when I use my name. It don't mean you gotta use your name, but what it means is if you are using a different name, well, Warren Buffett don't use Warren Buffett Enterprises. Yeah, Warren Buffett had money when he bought Berkshire Hathaway and he still uses his name as the brand ambassador even though the name of his business is different. So you can't use certain blue ocean businesses or blue ocean people to implement blue ocean strategies when you are not a blue ocean business, if I'm making sense. So you get a lot of this advice from people who they ain't doing it the way you're doing it. They've never done it the way you've done, you're doing it. So you can't take that advice and use it. You can't take certain advice from certain companies or infrastructures that have been built and think it's gonna work for you when you scrapping for money, you, you ain't generating enough revenue, you a solopreneur, your credit ain't all that good, you ain't got no cash reserves. So all these things that you try to apply to your business that other people apply to their bigger businesses, it don't work for you because you're not the same kind of business, all right? So this is one, one strategy that you need to use because when you have your holding company and you have it structured correctly, you have thought through your brand identity and who the brand ambassador of your business is, now it makes it easier for you to go into the marketplace. Now, once you do go into the marketplace, the next thing that you need to do, which by the way, everything that I'm sharing with you, I always walk my clients through this when I'm having coaching sessions with them. Even when people join any of my programs, whether it's my online training program or my mentorship program, we have a self-assessment module that we walk you through. And everything that I'm showing you, we have a workbook and we have videos to walk you through each aspect of this assessment to show you how to, number one, properly structure your business, how to, identify with the three B's, the right business structure, the right brand identity, and the right brand ambassador.
But then once you are able to figure those three B's out, I want you to use the next blue ocean strategy of identifying with or developing your five P's. Because now that your business is structured, let's say, and you have certain operational divisions, things that you're doing, products and services that you're providing, that may be divisions or subsidiaries. They may be separate business entities, but they are structured correctly and you are at the top of the mountain. Well, we want to make sure however you're here, how, how, however you're positioned here, that it makes sense so that when you go into the marketplace, when you come over here to the marketplace, you can get the right you could get the right attention that you need when you come over here. Because a lot of times, let's say if this guy is the landscaper, right? Or let's say if this guy is the artist. Or let's say if this guy is the marketer. Or whatever, whatever, the, whatever the thing is that this person does. Number one, if your main business is centered around the thing you do, you're not properly structured. Because even if you are the landscaper, the artist, the clothing designer, the, the, the marketer, the car detailer, the painter, whatever you are, you should still have the holding company because this is going to be your parent umbrella company. And this company should be under that so that you don't always have to go into the marketplace as the landscape guy because everybody's a landscape guy. Am I making sense? You go to the marketplace as the artist. Everybody's an artist. But if you properly position yourself at the top of this mountain with a different type of role, with a different type of designation, now when you go into the marketplace, people are not just seeing you as that or as whatever it is that you do here in your operating entity. They're going to see you as an expert who happens to own that type of operating entity. I'm giving you the game. I'm telling you, especially right now in this recession, in this time of uncertainty, in this season of volatility, if you can just figure out how to properly structure your organization and properly position yourself within your organization so that you can properly present yourself in the marketplace as something more than just the thing you do when it comes to selling your products and services, you will be like a fisherman with chum in a red ocean that's bloody full of sharks because you're going to attract the right fish to you because you got the right chum. This is powerful. I, I hope you understand what, I, what, I, what I've said so far. I would love to get some feedback uh, from all of you that are watching. If you are interested in participating in the self-assessment that I have, I would love to give you access to it. Uh, I have it. It's all, all available. This is available on my, uh, on my uh, university platform. It's a self-assessment. It's a business coaching assessment that we walk all of our clients through. And, and I really think that the concepts and the strategies that I use to give to my students and clients, I really think that they are like next level. I really do. And I'm not just saying that to brag. I'm telling you that I think that they're next level. So I would love to give you access to uh, this self-assessment. So as I said, we have a online program. It's called right here. It's called the Millionaire Blueprint. And this is an online business and financial wealth building system. So we teach you how to properly start and structure your holding company. We teach you creative tax strategies, financial literacy. We teach you real estate investing. We teach you the fundamentals of sales and marketing and how to build the right systems and processes. We teach you about QuickBooks and CRMs and goal setting and family wealth building. This is a very comprehensive program. I call it a millionaire blueprint because it's exactly that. It's a blueprint that can make you a millionaire because all of the components of this program are the things that you're going to need in order to become a millionaire. In my millionaire mentorship program, 
we give you access to this online program, but we also give you access to one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, weekly coaching calls, quarterly masterminds, workshops like the VIP workshop we're gonna be hosting this Saturday. Uh, but I brought this up because I brought this up because one of the programs or courses that we have in our program is our business coaching assessment. I just told you this. It's a business coaching assessment and we show you our five step business coaching self assessment. So literally you have a workbook that you can upload and print out and then you can go through each video segment and literally take a coaching self assessment to see where you are in light of number one, assessing your goals, making sure you have the right financial targets, identifying your three B's, your business structure, making sure your business structure is right, your brand identity is right, and you have a brand ambassador. If you can build a company and check those three B's, the likelihood of you having blue ocean results in a red ocean goes up tremendously. We also show you how to develop your five P's. What are the five P's? Your position, because you gotta change how you're positioned in the market. When I talk to people and they tell me, oh, I started ABC LLC, and this is what our business is about, and I'm like, everybody's doing that. You gotta differentiate yourself, and you can't really differentiate yourself just by saying you're different. It's how you reposition yourself. That's one of the P's. You gotta reposition yourself. So the first P is position. The second P is product. So we gotta look at your products and see, are your products in demand? Does anybody wanna buy your products and services? And once you figure out what the right products and services are, the third P is pricing. You gotta price them the right way. And then when you price them, you gotta package them the right way. And when you package them, you gotta present them the right way. That's the five P's. We also show you how to integrate your S and P's. That's your systems and processes. Your systems and processes are important because you ain't gonna be able to run no business, no business, dog, if you ain't got no systems and processes. I mean, you just cannot run a business without systems and processes. That's one of the questions I always ask people that I talk with. One of the first few questions I ask people when I talk with them. Like if you uh, need access to this self-assessment, if you need access to this blue ocean strategy that's gonna help your business stand out and make money in this recession and in this uh, time of uncertainty, well, when you respond, when I give you the number to text, if you respond, right, one of the first few questions we're going to ask you is how are you how are you handling sales marketing operations and financials if you if you tell me well i'm not really handling them well that lets me know we need to help you integrate the right systems and processes because you're going to have to have sales marketing operations and financial systems and processes There's just no way your business is going to grow if you ain't got that even if your business start making money and you ain't got it you're going to collapse because you're not going to be able to track anything that you're doing so what i want you to do is i want you to text the word millionaire to me that's probably what you would like to be and if so i want to give you access to my self-assessment i want to give you an opportunity to help us identify with where your pain points are like what exactly are you dealing with that you want to overcome in this season and we'll show you exactly what you need to do what you need to learn and how you need to implement it so you can text millionaire to 404-478-7213 just text millionaire don't worry about nothing else right now just text millionaire to 404-478-7213. Uh, Al Redman, thank you. He said, thank you for this insight, aware of the red ocean. Yeah, so I don't care about being a blue ocean business. I want to be, but I'm not gonna waste my whole life you know, trying to be something I'm not. If I'm a red ocean business and I'm in a red ocean, I'm just gonna learn blue ocean strategies and throw a whole lot of chum in the red ocean, right? Because I'm gonna attract not just sharks, but I'm gonna track fish. And if I know how to swim with fish 
while I track, uh, swim with sharks, even though I'm attracting them just to catch fish, then we all going to eat. The sharks going to eat and I'm going to eat. If you ever see some of these free, you know, like these free divers, they got people that go out there and dive in the, in the free water, the free ocean, and they got spears. They just hold a breath and they down there with sharks. But even in the midst of sharks having these little frenzies feeding whole fish, they still know how to catch enough fish and come back up for air. And that's what you have to do in seasons like this, in times like this, when the market seems to be volatile, when there's a potential market crash, when there's a recession, you got to be able to do that. James Forbes. Hey, James, I appreciate you. James just joined our millionaire mentorship program. James, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for all the kind words that you gave when we spoke over the phone. James said he's been watching the show. He's been watching and following us for some time and he decided to pull that trigger just to get that extra dose of momentum and information and access and mentorship and I appreciate you tremendously. Like sometimes y'all that be watching these shows, you gotta look at the comments and listen to what people are saying because a lot of people know me but a lot of people, a whole lot of people don't know me. So I'm not like as big as some other gurus out there but what I do know is I'm in red oceans and I know I have a lot of competition, but I'm going to keep throwing chum out there because I know that there are some sharks that's going to come. There are some dolphins going to come. There are some sailfish. There are some marlins and we all going to enjoy life and eat good and see success because we're going to do it together. So thank you, James. James said the holding company game is on another level. A small percentage of companies in red oceans have holding companies. You are correct. The self-assessment is thought provoking. Thank you for that. Yeah, so the self-assessment by just in and of itself is definitely thought provoking. It's, very, it's a very good exercise and we use it. We use it so that you can at least have some idea of how you need to structure your organization. But then when you're in my mentorship program, I complement that when we have our one-on-one -on -one coaching session because I'm able to help you identify with those key concepts and how to implement them and integrate them into your business. So, hey, I appreciate all of you. It's an amazing Thursday here. I pray that it's an amazing Thursday for you where you are. I want you to reach out to me, text the word millionaire to 404-478-7213. If there are any questions you have, anything we can help you with, we are here to serve. That's what we do here at Ramon Preston Enterprises. We'll be back here tomorrow, 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Ramon Preston.